All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to go over some of the Florp Browser security settings. So Florp Browser is based on micro, or not Microsoft, but Mozilla Firefox, and that means that they use a lot of the same security settings and preferences that Firefox uses. So if we go into the settings, which is accessible through these three little lines up here in the upper right hand corner and go to settings, you'll see something that looks like this. And you can go down to privacy and security and you can control your security through some different subsets of settings. Now, for most people, it'll just be set on standard, which will block info and tracking stuff from social media trackers, cross-site cookies, tracking content in private windows, crypto miners, and fingerprinters. And for a lot of people, that's probably just fine. But if you want, they have an even stricter level of security that you can enable. And this will block information from social media trackers. It'll block cross-site cookies, tracking content in all windows, crypto miners, and known and suspected fingerprinters. And this is strict. And the thing to keep in mind is if you block some of this really in-depth information that websites use, like a lot of their cookie information, some of that might actually prevent the websites that you're using from being displayed or run properly because they're blocking a lot of questionable stuff in the background that a lot of websites just kind of use to run and do their thing in general. And then down here, you have the option to customize your experience about like what cookies you want to block, what tracking content you want to block, do you want to block crypto miners? Do you want to block known fingerprinters? And what that means is fingerprinters will use whatever information they can glean from your computer to try to identify you as an entity to advertise to or sell advertising information about. This could literally be as simple as seeing what resolution your computer supports, which would tell them what graphics card you have, which would then tell them kind of who you are as you browse the web. So you can determine where you want and when you want this information blocked, or if you even want it blocked at all through these different pull down windows and by toggling them on or off with this little check mark. And you can switch between these however you like, especially if you know that most of the websites that you like to go to are generally safe, but maybe your friend wanted to share a really questionable streaming site with you and you're not sure that you trust them. You could up the ante on your privacy and your security before you go there. You can also have website privacy preferences. You can tell websites not to sell or share your data. You can also send websites a do not track request. These are more of a suggestion than a hard requirement because a lot of websites just ignore that, but it's an official de declaration to them that you don't want your information to be misused. You can also select different options here that say resist fingerprinting and IP address leaks. Fingerprinting, as I was talking before, is a tracking mechanism that relies on identifying unique information about your system in order to figure out who you are as an entity as you browse the web. And you can enable strong protection against fingerprinting, which will force light mode, disabling some APIs and some sites may be broken automatically dismiss access confirmation prompts for HTML5 image data, prevents websites from using the canvas reading prompt unless manually permitted, disable WebGL. WebGL is a JavaScript API that's used to render graphics, which can be used to identify your GPU. And then down here, you can enable WebRTC connection, which is a standard that provides real-time calling. If you disable the setting, you will not be able to use Discord, etc. Uh, and then down here, you've got cookies and website data. You can manually clear your browsing data right here by sitting clear data. You can also manage the data from what websites have been collecting it, and you can remove these cookies. You can also block some of them and then save your changes. And then you've also got some exceptions to cookies and site data that gets deleted when Florp closes, and you can actually select this to delete everything every time you close your web browser. 
You can manage exceptions to any of these rules through the exceptions window. You can also tweak a lot of the different settings for how your computer handles, well, you can also tweak a lot of the settings for how Floor handles things like passwords, autofill data, your saved search history, and all the different permissions for things that have access to your location, your camera, your microphone, speaker selection, notifications that go directly to your desktop, autoplay content, and virtual reality. So starting up here with your saved passwords, wherever I was a moment ago, you can have it ask to save a password. It won't do so automatically. You can fill usernames and passwords automatically when you click on a different password field. You can have it suggest strong passwords to you when creating new passwords, which is always really nice to have. You can suggest that Firefox relay email masks to protect your email addresses. Show alerts about passwords for breaches and breached websites. And then you can also add in require device sign in to fill and manage passwords. This might actually be a good idea, especially if you have a shared computer. That way, if you've got kids, you can prevent them from accidentally putting in your password automatically and then using your credit card info to buy money in Fortnite as a good example. You can use a primary password, formerly known as a master password, to control and contain all of your passwords. And you can allow Windows single sign-on for Microsoft work and school accounts. Down here, you've got autofill data. Do you want to save and fill addresses? Do you want to save and fill payment methods? So do you want Florp to save your credit card info? And then down here, you can also require a device sign-in so you have to put in your password again in order to autofill your credit card information. Again, if other people are using your computer and some of them might decide to go have fun with your credit card information like kids, it's a good idea to have that turned on. Down here you have history. You can have Florp use custom settings for history, remember your history, never remember history. And you can tweak that specifically down here, like always use a private browsing mode. Remember your browser and download history, remember search history, or clear history when, when Florp closes. You can also just hard clear it at any time by clicking clear history. And you can clear it up to all of the things ever saved, including site settings, temporary cache files, cookies and site data, and history, and then you can hit clear. It's really easy to do that. And then you can kind of tweak what browsing data that you automatically want cleared when Florp closes, when you, you know, exit out of the program completely. Down here, you can manage what websites have access to your, you know, different inform your different uh, connected peripherals, your location, your microphone, your camera and all that jazz. If there's anything on here that you don't want to be there, like for my location, I can click this and I can remove that website and I can save changes and it will no longer have permission to know my location, even if it did before. So you can manually adjust that. You can remove websites, remove all websites, all that good stuff. And then down here, you can block pop-up windows and then warn you when websites try to install add-ons. Um, the data collection stuff isn't really being used right now by Florp, so I'm not too concerned. You can allow Firefox to get some experience data in order to improve the experience of the core that Florp is built on top of. You also can't really change any settings for website advertising preferences. You can change the security section to block dangerous and deceptive content, block dangerous downloads, and warn you about unwanted, uncommon software. This is like a built-in like ad, or not, not a built-in ad blocker, but a built-in virus program, where if you're about to go to a website that Florp has reason to believe is compromised or has a virus, it'll warn you and try to keep you from going there. It'll also try to doubt block suspicious downloads. Like let's say you decided to go to a website with free software and one of them might not be software, but a virus, it'll try to warn you. And then, you know, just all of that sort of general safety is what these three toggles is controlling. Certificates, query OCSP responder servers to confirm 
the current validity of certificates. You might as well leave that turned on. Allow Florp to automatically trust third-party root certificates you install. Um, and then down here, you've got HTTPS only mode. I didn't have it disabled because that's by default, but if you have a reason to enable that, you can do so here. DNS over HTTPS, you can play around with that here. And then DNS and HTTPS um, usage rules, default protection, increased protection, or maximum protection are all available. And you can read about the different functionalities of each one of these. Mine's currently on default because that's usually pretty much fine for my generic standard web browsing purposes. I don't really go anywhere crazy or interesting. But if you find yourself going into weird places, you might want to add maximum protection just so that you're safe. And that's pretty much it for all of the security settings for Florp. I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.